Here's a question for you. What would you buy if you needed a small utility vehicle, but you did not have a lot of money? We actually have an answer for that, and it happens to be this, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, bear in mind that these are two very different pickups, and this one is on the lesser priced end, and this one is on the higher priced end. And that's because this one is just a step up from the base model SE. This is an SEL with very few options. And this one here is an SEL Premium. Now bear in mind, this is also a 2022 model. This is a 2023 model, but what we're gonna be talking about is 2023 pricing. Yes, and there's basically about $10,000 between them mm -hmm. from kind of a little bit more affordable end to a little bit more pricey end. Uh, so this is kind of a buyer's guide. If you're looking into the Santa Cruz, we'll show you all the differences between them. So let's start over here, dude. This is your baby, right? Yeah, I just bought this. So this is mine, my little baby pickup. And it is a 2023 Santa Cruz SEL. Now it has the, it's not the premium. So because of that, it has the less powerful 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Can you pop the hood? I can do that. Yeah, because I want to see the differences like visually if we can see it. So um, naturally aspirated, right? No turbos. That's right, 191 horsepower, 181 pound feet of torque. And that's not the reason I got it. I know it's a weak sauce compared to the other one. What I do like is the fact that it has a regular eight speed automatic transmission. And it's a smooth shifting vehicle. I have had no issues with it. It does hunt for gears when you're on the highway going say 70 to 80 miles per hour. It seems to bounce between sixth and eighth gear, especially when you're climbing hills. Yes, let me pop this one because this one has a, also two and a half liter, but turbocharged. So yeah, more money, more power. Significantly more power. Uh, but less efficiency, my friend. That's right. My combined MPG, and this is all wheel drive, combined MPG is 23, and this one is 22. And I know that's kind of like, well, so what? Well, that does make a difference in the long term. Now, one of the things I could do, by the way, is I could take the engine cover off of this and put it on mine. Please don't. And I would instantly have a turbo. Uh, Just an idea. Well, I don't know <laughs> if you can because the oil thing is different here. Oh, and, yeah, they are a little bit different. And, well. But they're both direct injection. They're both all in-house, by the way. Everything that you see here, both the transmission and engines, they're all built in-house by Hyundai. And it's interesting because actually... My engine bay looks a lot different than yours. Yeah. I didn't, I don't know why. Well, just like different stuff in different places. Huh. Who knew? Yeah. So if you care about the efficiency a little bit more, uh, I would say, plus a little bit more like dirt road like this driving, I would go, I would say go non-turbo eight speed. Right. Auto. We've had better luck with the eight speed auto over what this has. Which is an eight speed dual clutch. Yeah. The for sure. Yeah, the dual clutch, um, you may have heard of some recalls and whatnot that Hyundai's done with some other vehicles, including this one. Yes. And unfortunately, that is based on that dual clutch transmission. The regular eight speed has not been recalled. As a matter of fact, they've been building this transmission for a while. So this engine transmission combo is a relatively reliable setup that they have. It's one of the reasons I wanted it. I really didn't want to have to worry about the dual clutch, especially off-road. Okay, uh, but you still have the benefit of all-wheel drive. Yes. I want to look at your payload because you know I love trucks. Yes, yes, check out the I, payload. I, I, th love trucks. I think you'll find this interesting. I love utility. I want to see what your payload rating is. Oh, it's down here. Yeah. 1,411 pounds. That is correct, okay. which and is better, well, as good as certain full-size trucks that have like special off-road packages and whatnot. So your truck approximately weighs about 4,200 pounds, just over 4,000 Which pounds. isn't that much. It's right. lighter than that. But it's a four, it's still a you know, four-door proper. Yep. You can put humans in the back. Five-person, you have your suitcase in there? Yep, yep, I do. That's okay. That shows the utility of the back. Yeah, That's you're coming from Los Angeles, I think. Yeah, yeah, just did a long drive speaking of Hyundai in a Hyundai cross-country. That is available on TFL Car. And show me your bed and then um, show me the hitch because you have a towing package. Man, if I only had a dollar for every time you said that to me. Show me your bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look at that. Easy. Oh, easy open. By the way, you may have noticed we're, we're cold. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like 20 degrees today. It's gotten a lot warmer. It's like 25 now. Um, so, 
Same exact bed that you have yes. with a couple exceptions. I do not have, because this is once again, just one step above the base model and the SE is a lot less expensive. This is the SEL. So I don't have the light in here for the bed, which is okay. Um, and then in we'll, here- We'll open the cubby. Yeah. There's no uh, special outlet in here. No what? power? No power. What That's okay. Or? I'm going to be able to plug in power and have my own, uh, I'm going to have an uh, inverter, the whole nine yards. Coffee maker? Something like oh, that? Of course. One that actually works, unlike on when we went to the Go Big trip and it didn't work. So, once again, Santa, all Santa Cruz's have this. Yeah. This little in-bed storage space. Yeah, and I actually tested this out and filled it with water and pulled the drain plug. Oh, it, it worked? Yeah, it worked great. Okay. It's at a slight angle, so it drains out nicely. Interesting. Yeah. Nice but tailgate. Uh, I, I would say that this tailgate bed is about half the size of the one that's in the Honda Ridgeline, roughly. I, I would say so. But I love this because look, you still have more space right. on the floor, right? This is why I did this. Yes. So there's an activity package, just so you guys know, that is available or was available for this model. And the activity package costs around $3,250. Or $3, and one of the things it would give you, amongst all the other toys, is that roll top that he has. But it takes up over a foot of space. It's like big. Without that, I actually have all this space. Plus, notice how this is scalloped. It's really hard to tell in the other truck. So I have the maximum amount of space. So if you combine this over four foot with this fairly good sized tailgate, I can actually hold some real stuff. Yeah, and you still have, of course, your rear glass with um, heating elements. Yeah, and that's So you can standard. melt the snow. Right. But you no open, no right. window. That opening is really small. And at first I kind of regretted that, but then I thought, mm, mm, it's, it's, it's gonna be okay. You saved a lot of money. Right. And of but, course, at the end, we'll, we'll tell you what these cost. Uh, the Santa Cruz uh, starts uh, with the front wheel drive, right? Front wheel drive version, Around yeah. 26 grand. Right, and that's right? for the SE base yes. model. But it has a lot of standard features, which is what makes it a bit of a bargain. I wanted to, sh oh, go ahead. Wait, before we leave, um, hitch. I yes. Asked you to show, me. show me your hitch. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. where my hitch. Okay. So two, two, two inch receiver and you do have wiring. Yep. So that's really cool. And what is it like up to 3,500 pounds of towing? This one can go 3,500 pounds. And if you get the turbo, then it goes up to 5,000 pounds. That's when properly equipped. Bear in mind, I do not have a brake controller in this and I don't expect to need one because I'm never, well, I'm hopefully never going to go up to its limit. I'm looking at some travel trailers that weigh around 2,200 pounds. Yeah, that wasn't the purpose of this vehicle when you were buying it. Can right? I show everybody something that what? we totally what? missed the what? last few times we what? talked about this? It's back here. These truck, both of these little trucklets or uh, pickups, they both have a version of self-leveling rear suspension. So this is how it- Can I try? Yeah, well, uh, you could okay. try, but it-, okay. it I, you I'm heavy. Drive, well, you have to drive around so it can actually build up air. Okay. So this isn't gonna do anything. You're just humping <sighs> my truck. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so the, the shock in there, it basically has like a valve. So what it does is it remembers this height. So if you load this down and put a trailer on it, do whatever, drive around and it sags, after a few blocks, the pressure regulates and it remembers this height and it brings it back to near this height. So without expensive gizmos Air or whatever. Air suspension, right, compressors it and does all that it. stuff. And it actually works. I actually did this. I just couldn't shoot it because it was at night. But I, it actually kind of brought itself back up after I had about oh, almost a thousand pounds worth of uh, wooden boxes in the back. So it works and it's simple. Meaning, of course, one less thing to worry about and it's self-leveling. That's awesome. I yeah, really yeah. love that. Thank you for pointing that out. Really quickly, before we show the most, ex the more expensive one, can you show your interior, your driver? Yes. Can I show one more thing before that? Uh, yes. It's a big regret. The only regret I have with not getting that expensive activity package thing is this. You see, what? I don't have roof rails like you do. Wah, wah. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that means I can't put crossbars on here unless I get those ones that go in, you know, grip, and I don't really like those very much. And I talked to the dealer, they said they should be getting these things in and hopefully it could be a dealer installed thing, but there's nothing concrete about that. Meaning there's no box that you could check off saying specifically, I just want these. Cause I would have, I would have spent hundreds of dollars and put, you know, had these put in because I do want to put a rack up here at some point in time, just so Andre could say I have a nice rack. I'm not going to let you steal my roof bars. Okay. So I I'm not going to let you steal them. Hold on. This little button here when your hands are frozen. Yes. There it goes. Oh, that's uh, handy. Yep, it's handy. Okay. All right, now the camera guy, he should probably get in there 
and have a look-see because it's a very different interior, especially the front dash, than the one that's on the SEL Premium. And this is where the big changes really are. Everything from the steering wheel, which unfortunately is not leather wrapped, and you really do feel it on a frozen day like today, uh -huh. to the IP and, of course, the infotainment screen. Now, on the other vehicle, that's a 10.25 inch, you know, digital screen. Yes. And the infotainment system is also 10.25 inch. Mine, well, I don't have that. I have a little four inch screen in between real gauges, which I actually really like, and I have an eight inch screen. And honestly, I'm completely okay with that. And it's less buttons, like fake buttons to push, and more real buttons, which I like too. And also cloth seats, correct? Cloth seats. These are heated. That's why I got the SEL instead of the SE, specifically so I could have the heated seats because I live in Colorado. <laughs> Can we, can we do that? Can you jump in the driver's seat and the camera guy will jump in the passenger? Yep, and I'll fire it up. I, I want to see the lights come on. And you all got it. Stuff. You got it. By the way, the camera guy is Case and he's been very patient with us because we're old. Yes. And uh, I called him camera guy. Well, it's better than calling him Case the Spectacular, which is what he likes being called. Okay. So, let me turn this down here. Okay. Turn down the... Very simple setting. So come on in. I got mats. Can I, is, that, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's totally I'm, okay. I'm a little muddy. Yeah, my kids are going to destroy the interior anyway. Okay. So, this setup, 8-inch screen, infotainment, very simple to use. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto standard. Okay. That's pretty sweet. When you work up your level, you can get, like, uh, wireless charging. Which I have. Which I don't. Okay. You know, that's... Do you the, miss it, or...? Um, you, you know, I don't really care that much because just plug it here, into a wire is what, easy here's enough. Here's what I noticed, and I'll show you over there. There's a little cubby for wireless charging down here in, yeah, my, in my center. Cruiser. Which I don't have. Uh, but sometimes when I'm driving, the phone shifts uh, yeah. and it doesn't charge. So, <laughs> okay. you know what I'm saying? So it's not uh, perfect. No, it's not ca perfect. Case, can you see the gauges? And, and, and Wait, you can go 160 miles per hour? There is this way. Way. This car will not do it. <laughs> this car will do 120 on a good day, light downhill with the back. You know, it's just, it's not that powerful. But you see the tack, I like having the tack on the right. I, I don't mind that at all. Yeah. This whole layout is good. The center component, it's a very small screen, it's about four inches. And you can go through pages. What I do like, this is the traction one, yeah. which is cool because when you're going through it, it'll actually show what wheels have traction. I've been playing with it and like screwing around in a parking lot doing donuts. Um, but this whole setup here, it just gives you the basic information. You could easily scroll through it and no big deal. And you have drive modes, I noticed. Look. Yes, snow, I do. Snow, smart, sport, and normal. I have the exact same drive modes you have. Yes. And I have hill descent control. Not that I'll ever use that. I have auto hold. And like parking? Yeah, but it's, parking just, yeah, it's just that. That's all. Parking that. camera? I see. I think you have more cameras. I'm, no, no, I don't actually. I don't really? have the limited one. Uh, okay. The top of the line. Which we will talk about the different trims in just a minute. So what I do like is that I have real buttons here that I actually push and I can feel yes. them actuate and knobs that can turn around and do that. These are not, you know, these are just like that one, the, the surface buttons. Kind of that, haptic little They're, buttons, they're not even yeah. haptic. There's no feedback, though. Yeah. You just hit it and it does whatever. And you have lanes keep or centering? Yes, I have lane centering and it works really, really well. And it's exactly the same setup that's in that car mm. and the same setup that's in the electric one. And I do have the cruise control thing. What I do not have is the, uh, whatchamacallit, oh, the adaptive. adaptive cruise control. Okay. And I got to be honest with you, I kind of miss that but it's not that hard. It's just like, oh yeah, maybe I should not crash into the car in front of me and I hit the brake from time to time. Okay, um, so before we switch over to the other one, how much was the sticker here? Okay, well, open up that glove compartment. Oh, is there an actual sticker? Yeah, it's a sticky sticker, so be careful. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? 32,000. That's, two... de that's with destination. 245. So the only thing that's not on there is tax, uh, but yeah, so it is about ten thousand dollars less than that one and once again sage gray is the color which by area. the way is like a four hundred dollar option but i i've always wanted a green car even though it says sage gray well sage is green so yeah it's, no i like uh, the color actually. I, it's, I absolutely adore it sweet well and uh well let me show you what's inside mine absolutely let's quick. do that oh it's got a little tune that, that sings to you when you're done 
So really quickly, uh, the grills are basically the same. I love how they have the lights. They're right? fantastic at night. Uh, kind of daytime uh, running lights. We but did notice these are different. Yeah, the headlights are a bit different. Look, there's like four different bulbs here versus big one here and a little marker down below. So, I don't need four to prove that I'm a man. Well, I do have that. I don't have a front camera, as you can tell here, but the rest of the uh, fascia is about the same. Right. Then, I want to show you this in the back. So this is what you were talking about, right? Right. So there's a little window in the back that I can open. And I did have this because this was part of the package. The tunnel. Right. And so this... it works like this. Bam. And I admit that it's cool, uh, especially for people who want to store stuff there. But if you want to actually use these things as little pickups, having that takes up a ton of space. Look at, look at how much space. You can't close this any more than it is. Yeah. So this whole space here, which is, I believe, over a foot from here to here, is completely useless. And on top of that, you have these rails here, and these rails take up space as well. But on the flip side, like I went to the airport recently, uh, uh -huh. and I stored all the suitcase. Nobody knew what I had in the back. Right, so, and, it's, and it's armored. It's not going anywhere. They're not going to be able to cut through it like a piece of fabric. Right, it's actually aluminum, which is nice. Also, you have the uh, outlet over there and the lights. Oh, yes, just really quickly. Um, I do have this rail uh, with additional cleats, lights. And over here, take a look. Take a look over here. I have an outlet right there. So I think it's 120. Yeah, 120 volt, not very high powered, right? No, still, no, you can run a laptop on it. Uh, maybe like a battery for a cordless drill. Or yeah, something like wait that. until you see what mine can do in the future. I'm okay. going to hook it up. So let's, let's, look, at the let's look at the interior. Aha. So I have. Oh, yeah. I don't have Santa Cruz mats, but I have WeatherTech. Yeah. And I have this. You don't have this. I have a no, sunroof. I don't. And the package that I was talking about came with the sunroof, the back window port thingy, the roof rails, and the sliding rear part, along with some other components and goodies. Ah, oh, now my, see, my. there's one thing. Now do me a favor, hit, hit your left turn signal, if you could figure out how to shut off your... Oh, it doesn't illuminate? It doesn't show the road? Wait. Maybe when you're in drive. No, I don't have the extra um, <gasps> camera. Oh, the you're dead to me. You're dead to me. Rip, 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 ripping my clothes. I can't <laughs> believe that. Okay, so on higher end Hyundai products, that digital display, when you hit your turn signal, will show a camera view from the side, and it is invaluable. In, the, in those little Yes, uh, it works so well. I yep. was used, I used that for 5,800 and something miles. In your Ionic 5? In the Ionic 5. Yes. And I got to tell you, there were nights where there was like rain and then schmutz coming all over the place. And the mirrors were really messed up and I could still use those and turn safely. It was great. Well, okay. Well, anyway, anyway I, I, but, I don't have it on this one. No, you don't. I, I really okay. feel for you. Okay. But what you do have is that very cool screen and that is configurable. Yes. And, and I, I can see a lot of information like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, it got cold, so my tire pressure's... Uh, yeah, Dips it's dropped. below the limit. Yeah, apparently so. Um, so, so. I have nitrogen in mine. And I've been getting about just over 20, like in the real world, mm -hmm. MPG. I know, I know you don't have a lot of miles on 22 yet. is what my average is, um, and I, I have so 310 miles on I'm the car. I'm at about 21-ish okay. in the real world. Look, this looks the same, almost. This is the same. There, I think I mine are metal colored here. My buttons are a little and different And I do colors. have this wireless charger here, yeah. like we said, except, like I said, sometimes it moves and it doesn't work perfectly. But look, I don't have your dials and manual no. buttons here. This is what I dislike, and I think a lot of you guys have complained about them as well. And the thing is, is that there's no actual uh, haptic feedback with these. Right. It's right? just a beep. It's just a beep, so there's no like little buzz or click letting you know that you actually hit something. That's an issue. Roman can't stand the, the fingerprints, by the way. I want to add a few just so next time he drives it, he's going to see some more no, fingerprints. No, please, please. Don't. Yeah. Anyway, and this is a bigger screen, but really, they, they're the functionality of the two of them is very similar. It's yeah. really not that different, which is what I do like. But for those of you who want a bigger screen, you get that unfortunately both have this which Hyundai loves and I don't and that is their Little volume dials. dial there's also a volume control here on yeah the on the steering wheel, wheel do which you have that? yes I do okay actually our steering wheels are very similar except this is leather but I know that uh, that sucks are you gonna swap these actually I thought about it okay I, I thought about what it would take to do that and so I was gonna get Henny Man Case out there and say <laughs> hey dude come on help me out but uh, he's he, okay. no we can't do that um but you do have that 
uh, this this thing really actually matters. Does, is this heated? Do you, you have paddle shifters? No, I don't. Oh, I, I don't should, have paddle you shifter. Should, you should. But uh, so. Uh, and the huge benefit of this, of course, like we said, the turbocharger, once the gearing works, once the transmission kicks it, in, it kicks, it, it the flies. turbo is really fast. Well, we raced this against a bunch of trucks last and year. And it won a few races. It won a few yeah. races and it came close on other ones. If it weren't for the turbo lag and the lag of the uh, transmission, transmission kind of yeah. kicking in, this thing would be a rocket. As yep. it is, it's really fast. All right, so the final verdict is that the price on this one is closer to 40. Yeah. So it would be close to 40, right? Oh, if over this that. Was, if this I was priced this vehicle out and, sorry, wrong side. Here we go. Now, by the way, let's quickly talk about the trims before we talk about that. SE is the base model. You can get that in all-wheel drive with the smaller or less powerful engine, SEL like mine. Then there's the Knight version. And the Knight is kind of a mix between the two, but it does not have the more powerful engine. Then the SEL Premium, that's this basically. Uh -huh. And that does have the big engine. And then there's the Limited, and that's the very top of the line. That gets you everything, all right? So this vehicle, as I equipped it, came in at 42,540. And that's 2023 pricing, correct? Right. Okay. The thing about 2023 is you can't get this color. Mojave Sand is gone? Mojave Sand is gone. Um, so they have like six colors, but that's not one of them, which is unfortunate because I think it's actually a pretty good color. However, I think that they overheard Tommy who said it looks like hearing aid beige. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Case's friend came up with that term. Yeah, nice going there, uh, Case's friend. So finally, um, I also took one, a limited, and I fully equipped it, and it came out to just under $46,000. Whoa. So that's about as high as you can go with those. And that is, once again, well, not only in mid-size truck territory, that's in full-size truck territory. I would say so. Yeah. Yes. So it's really a question of taste. Do you want something this small? Now, I know you guys are asking about, what about the Ford uh, Maverick? No, and nobody cares. <laughs> no. The Ford Maverick does compete with this vehicle, yeah. but I think they're very different. The Ford is a little bit more truckish. This is a little more carish, and I think that's a fair thing to say. I think so. The interior comfort in these, I believe, is superior, but they're very different in terms of their feel and the type of people they appeal to. Yeah, and this one does not have a hitch, but if it did, if it was properly equipped, it would tow about 5,000, 5, like you pounds, said. yeah. And you also have a skid plate as part of yours. Aha. You can get a kind of a peak, uh, a small peak at that skid plate, um, which is pretty good, you know, for rough roads. Yes, yes. And you can get, the cool thing is that uh, Hyundai is thinking ahead. So they do have a lot of uh, components that are like aftermarket components, but they're all Hyundai. Accessories? Yeah. Okay. Including an aluminum skid plate, uh, a whole bunch of accessories, including, believe it or not, you can snap on these um, blisters to basically give you like a fender flare. Like, like a larger one? Yeah. And it pops right cool. on. Uh, there's a bunch of other things. Unfortunately, they don't give you these roof rails as the option. Ah, that's the one thing I want. So, okay. uh, okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get that in the future. But so far, and I've only had this vehicle for a limited amount of time. It's a really funny story about how I got it. But there's a whole nother video. That's about a that. whole different video. Yes. Um, so far, it's proven to be everything I wanted it to be. And really considering that I was aiming for under $35,000 and I got this one for 32 and change. I'm very happy with the purchase. Plus that big fat warranty, I don't have to wrench on it. My wife and my kid can drive it. I'm okay with that because it's a family car. No, it's not an off-roader, but I didn't buy it to be an off-roader. So there it is. There you go. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. A little bit of a buyer's guide. You could see kind of what you get, what you don't get. Yeah. You know, with some of these trims. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. See you next time, guys.